great, great, great. Okay. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Boob Mentor Storytime. I'm Crystal Clear, and let's go ahead and start off with a prayer. My dearly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for once again having everybody come to see another episode of Storytime. Lord, I ask that you would just help me say the right words that people need for the week, and I just ask that you would just bless them and keep them, help them throughout any struggles that they go through, and just continue to be with them throughout their struggles. And we give you all the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. What's going on, Jenny? What's going on, Chris? It's been a while. I know. It's been a hot minute. I know. What's up, Teresa? It's been a hot minute. I know. It has. It has. So we was talking. So let's go ahead and talk for a little bit. Let's have some fun. What part of the conversation would you like to rehash? Well, you brought up uh, the topic that you wanted me to discuss earlier. There was many topics we discussed. Okay. Well, speak up and let's see. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Which one was the most entertaining of the topics? I don't know. Oh, God. Oh, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't know if God was in vain. I said on God before. I know you said on God before. I have. <laughs> She's laughing. Internally, I'm breaking inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, we was talking, you asked, uh, like, you wanted to talk about a strong relationship, and then we talked about other things. So I figured we'd just yeah, have a nice talk. Sorry. Okay. No, no, I just figured we'd just have a nice conversation about it without me spraying it like I just did. Okay. <laughs> so, one of the conversations we were having was on what makes a strong relationship. What makes a strong relationship? Well, I say that what makes a strong relationship is when two people go to the gym and pump that iron together. That's a relationship. Oh, yeah. You know, me and you just hit the gym. You put, you know, doing that 200 pound press, you know, I'm just doing the press, so, you know, we strong. Cool. She's like. Yeah, I go to the gym. <laughs> I do too. I go to the burger gym. <laughs> You've been getting healthy, so that's okay. Yes, I do. I've been getting healthy, you know. I've been eating more fruit lately because of the medication that I've been taking. The one the symptoms is weight gain, so you know, so like I've been trying to counter the weight gain with water based products so I can work it off the calories better, you know. And you know that I just felt like that, but but anyway, yeah, all right, so being serious, you okay. see, what makes a strong relationship? What makes a strong, I guess, romantic relationship? Who <laughs> romance? Oh, you, you went too far with that. <laughs> She's not, she's not thrilled. I think I hit a nerve. Well, that's it for story time. On Instagram. Roll credits. Nah, but um, strong relationships. Well, I was uh, while we was talking, and I was thinking about uh, you know, my parents' relationship. My parents been married for ooh, fifty years now. Mm-hmm. About 50 years. Probably more than 50 years, I Actually, believe. it's over 50. Is it over 50? Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, 1970, I believe they got married. Because how old is Drew? Uh, old. He just had a birthday. Yes. Happy so he's birthday, he's old, but older than old. But, uh, so like, oh, I think yeah, about... Yeah, it is. But uh, over the... I think about their relationship, and I think about other people's relationships. Like, me and you have been together for almost, what, 18 years now? Going on 18 years. Wow. So our relationship is... A, if our relationship committed a crime, it, it could go to prison. As an adult, and it can get drafted. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know... Can't drink yet, though. Right. So, mm -hmm. as, you know, my parents' relationship, you, you know, it... They're, they they're the retired. <laughs> they retired. They they, they, right. They the <laughs> yeah, so they retired. But like one thing I thought about is a common one common denominator as far as what makes a strong relationship, regardless if it's, you know, fifty years, uh eighteen years, I believe you've been with yours for how many years? Nine years. Wow, I know you that long? Nine years. I think the one of the biggest 
common denominators is communication. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say communication is the biggest common denominator is because not, let's face it, not everybody's born again Christian. Not everybody follows Jesus Christ. So I can't even say that, like, you know, that God is the reason for the foundation for a lot of the relationships to, to last that long. Now me, my relationship with you, I believe that God has been the forefront of it. Um, you know, my dad always, like when I watched my dad, he, he always, he always followed God's law. It's like God, then, you know, the wife and then the family. A lot of relationships don't follow Jesus Christ. Um, you know, let's, let's just face it. Some people are, follow different religions. Some people do other things. Some people don't even have a, a religion. So I say the biggest common denominator is communication. That's what makes them with a strong, strong relationship, mm -hmm. especially with married couples. Um, but you know, like my dad, uh, my dad, like as far as me and you and my dad, we follow Jesus Christ, at least as much as we could, you know, and so we try to put God in our foundation for our relationship. So a lot of the things that we do, we try to go according, go according to what the Bible teaches us to how we should do our relationships, how we should, you know, how we should, uh, what do you think? What's the word I'm trying to find? I'm trying to find a word, like, you know. How to, I guess having, like, being, having an open conversation with, like, your significant other allows you guys to be. Yeah, but I'm, th I'm trying to think about, like, what I'm trying to say about applying God within our relationships. Like, I guess have them as the foundation. I was about to say, it's the foundation of, or at least, like, like, the support beams of your like it's the foundation of like like I view our relationship as our original foundation. If we don't put like I know a lot of people say put God as your foundation. I was like, well, in the essence, our friendship was our foundation because that's right. where it was based off of. Right. But the pillars, what keeps the house up and running, would be like the beams, like the literal bones of our relationship would be God. Yeah, because a house without a foundation is going to collapse. Yeah, and if the bones and stuff don't work, like it like withers away and dies. Like that's the thing. That's why I, that's the, the, I don't think people realize it's like yes, God is our foundation in our relationship, but I view Him more as like the bones of like of what our relationship is. Right. Because if the bones falter and break then pretty much we're done right hey you know what you brought up a good point too like along with the the communication you brought up the point that friendship like that's one of the things that i always said to god when i was praying you know because you know i was always by myself i didn't have a girlfriend you was my only real relationship that i ever had oh that's sweet i know it's in the sweet trying to make brownie points yes but anyway, it's but anniversary month. He's really trying. Yeah, I'm really, really trying. But anyway, so but like you know, but friendship is definitely important. Like I could sit and uh, like I pray to God, I say you know what, I just need a friend, and God gave me you. You know what I mean? When I was younger and I was lonely by myself, you was my real girlfriend, as I said earlier. So it's like at the time though, when I was by myself, I always prayed to God that I wanted a friend, and friendship is definitely our basis of our relationship as well because you're my best friend Same. so and like i know that whenever situations arise i can confide to you on the stuff that's going on with me and it seems like a lot of times that even when me and you were struggling in our relationship because we do struggle a lot in our relationship I think because mainly because I'm the antagonist of our story, but the friendship seems like to be the foundation that keeps us together. Mm -hmm. And because God gave me you to be my wife, it just shows you that like the friendship, the friendship part is what what God uses to keep us strong. Yeah. I found a Bible verse about, you know, about finding somebody. Oh. It's uh, out of Proverbs. I believe it's Proverbs 18 verses 22. Of course it'll be out of Proverbs. Yes. 
I like Proverbs. It's, I think it's like the Book of Law or something. I think my dad said that. You know? Yeah, because I'm just... Right. And I'm going to read out the King James Version. And it says, Whoso find a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. So guess what? I prayed to God. He gave me you. So, you're a gift from God. Where's the wizard? Purr, 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 purr. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so like you know, you were a good thing. So he the father of a wife found it a good thing. Yes. So you're a good thing. Oh, I like to think so. Yeah. Yes. And the same thing with you, with, with you know, with your significant other, uh, husband. Yeah, Cause you know, see significant other, you know. But it's, you found him, or he found you, God gave you him, or he, you, and it's, you're a good thing. They found each other. Yes. But it's, but it's like I said, it, it's, 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 that's what makes us strong because of our friendship. And like I said, we go through a lot of gripes. I mean, I was thinking about the, the time when we had, like, whole bunch of situations that happened between us with you know your mom passing and and the kids passing and you know my friend passing and, it, and then you thought about the other stuff that you was going through with the pregnancies and stuff it's like we go we you know it's amazing it's kind of like you know when we move out of a house after living there for 20 years and then you realize oh my gosh how much stuff that we have in this house like it's so much compacted in the house so much baggage right you didn't realize you packed it all in and i was thinking about it we've been through a lot of wars together yep and that's kind of what led into our second conversation right and so it's like and hold that thought because you know what that and that's what i'm saying like you need there's situations where you need god to control the will because you know like i said i always thought that i was the antagonist of our of our story you, you know what i mean i feel so like a lot of times you know like i say all the times the story time that a lot of the situations that i got i went through going through my my growing pains of becoming a christian is from problems that i created you know what i mean and I feel the same way with our relationship. I feel like in our relationship, I created more problems in our relationship. I know there's times where you sat there and you like, Lord, I am about to knock this guy's head off. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just wanted to, you know, you know, but I'm sure you relied on the God to give you the strength to, to love me and not knock my head off, mm -hmm. you know? What if, I forget what the comedian said. Like it ain't uh, it ain't true love unless you plotting on them. That was Chris Rock. Oh, was it Chris Rock? Shout out to him too. So it's like yeah, it ain't true love if you if you ain't plotting on them. <laughs> so I'm like yeah. So it's like episode of CSI. Yeah, if you watch an episode of CSI, <laughs> don't if you if you're gonna take them out, but the only thing that stops you is an episode of CSI. I forget. I was I was dying. I, I was like, I'll make a wish. Right, because I used to see her watch CSI all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, oh, how to how I almost got away with murder. How I almost got away with <laughs> it. I'm like, I was gonna swore she had a notepad underneath her when I like underneath her chair when I whenever I walked in from work. So, nah. so but like like I said, when I think about those times, that's that's what really makes strong relationships. Is when you are able to go through a lot of wars. A lot of things that not only, you know, your spouse calls, but outside interferes. Like, you know, when the enemy brings trouble. Because enemy hates families. Mm -hmm. You know? And enemy, especially when you're trying to follow Jesus Christ, the enemy will use your own family members to sway you away from God. And try to destroy you from within. And I've been through that. You know what I mean? Where, where the enemy uses my kids against me. Or, you know, uses, you know, just just things that he he injects to try to ruin the establishment of a family, of a relationship. Satan hates us when we bond together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he will bring things. And trust me, like I said, I ain't going to deny it. I've fallen through traps that almost caused our relationships to go between me and you go downhill 
And it's just by the grace of God that he keeps reminding me what I need to do to try to salvage the, the marriage. And a lot of times I have to, you know, bite my tongue and it bite my pride and say, I'm sorry, because I am sorry for a lot of stuff that I caused. But the thing is, is that you can't say I'm sorry and salvage your relationship without having the open communication. Yep. You can't, the, the, the one thing I learned that uh, I believe is from Bishop David G. Evans. When you argue with somebody, with, with your spouse, arguing does not solve them anything, really. It really doesn't. Because he said, in theory, when you arguing with somebody, with your spouse, you're not arguing with your spouse. You're arguing with yourself within that spouse. And plus, a lot of times when you go through situations when you and your spouse are fighting, it, it's not you, you're not solving anything because at the end of the day, you might be more pissed off with each other. And the Bible says that, and I just said it to, you know, my friends, whenever they go through situations, you know, you can't fall to sleep. I think, I believe it says you can't, don't go to sleep when you have wrath in your heart or something like that. You can put the Bible verse up. Like I said, I never was great with Bible verses, like don't remembering. Let, don't let the sun set upon the Don't let the, the sun set upon the wrath. Yeah. And you can put that Bible verse up too. That, like you, you can't even go to sleep angry. Mm-hmm. Because, it, and that's true. Because a lot of times when you try to, when you just go to sleep angry, you wake up you feeling more angry because you didn't learn to let that go. You didn't get rid of that situation out of your heart. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, if we, if you really think about it, when you argue with somebody, that person won't understand what you're thinking unless you open your mouth. And that's why I said too many times, no matter what, if, if you feel, no matter if I'm wrong for what I say, because we have many arguments where he looked at me like, oh, what a jerk. But at the same time, even though I might be wrong for how I said it or what I said, at least you understood what I said. I know where you're coming from. Right. So like, regardless, you know, and like, what, like I, what I suggest too, when you communicate with your spouse is... You don't go, you don't go, you know, talk over each other. And if people don't know what talking over each other, that's demonstrated. So say something. Like say something like, say something stupid like, like I don't clean up the house. Hey, you don't clean up the house. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's talking about. What are you talking about? Can you think? Come on, come on. Not a lot. Hey, I'm just trying to let you know that you're not cleaning the house. Well, y'all, come clean the house. What about what you've been doing? What you talking about? Well, I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Talk about why you didn't do this. Why, why I ain't getting no food when I get home. That's a lot of deflection. Yeah, it's a lot of deflection. So, like, you, you get what I'm saying? So, it's like, if you're trying to compete in an argument, you're never going to solve the problem. You know what I mean? So, like, the one of the greatest things I think me and you do, I remember one time me and you had an argument, because we don't have debates, we have arguments. But one of the things I remember, one of the situations where one day you was pissed off at me. And I could feel it. Like, you, you can feel it, like, right over the, on the top of your, the back of your head. And I remember you said something, and I was like, okay, I closed the door. I said, let's go. Let's get, let's get this out, out of it. But see, the best part about it was I didn't try to talk over you and, you know, and try to compete in the argument to win the battle. I let you say whatever you need to say off your chest to the point that I wouldn't even say nothing for a little bite. I think I didn't say anything for like 10 minutes. So, you know, when you got just, when you started going off about what I did wrong, you went off. Like, you know, like running the race, you went off. You, you did, da, 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 da. but then I, at the end of your your debate or you, you talking to me, you started slowing down to 
because you was emptying out everything that was in your heart that you was mad at me for. Yeah. <clears throat> to the point that it were from, why don't you do this and this and this and this and then over time, and then he did this, and then, okay, that's all I got on my chest. So then after you get done that, that's when I rebut everything that's on my chest. Okay, so you done now? All right, so now it's my turn. And then I go off on, you know, whatever. And then I do the same thing. And then you did that, 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 that. And then after like five minutes of me going off, it's, I started like, it, you can feel like the, 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 I'm emptying the chamber of everything that was on my chest. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we didn't even really like solve the argument. But the most important factor was we got it off our chest. Yeah. A lot of couples who do the first type of argument, try to compete with each other, you're not even emptying things out of your out of your spirit to, to release it. You're only putting more bullets in the gun, yeah. or you're only putting more explosives in 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 the artillery because now you're pissed off because you're competing each other to win the argument, and that's why the Bible says, "Don't fall asleep on." Say it again. Don't let the sun Don't let set, the sun set on, on your, your wrath. wrath. And then it builds up. And then over time, because you're frustrated with your spouse, it could be something so simple. Like, I left the clothes on the chair where you don't want me to leave clothes on the chair in the living room. And that might be the last thing that just breaks the camel's back, the straw that breaks the camel's back and everything includes after that. And I've seen it happen. We're going through a couple of relationships that we know that's, that's imploded. Yeah. It's sad. It is sad because, you know, especially ones that been around longer than we are. And, you know, it is, and, I, and it's hard too because it's hard because you're trying to keep the communications open and like I said, it not only you're going through the situation with your spouse, you're going through the situation might be with your job, and then you're going a situation with the enemy attacking you, with the Satan's attacking you. And then sometimes it does get hard to ask God to, for help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to go back to the foundation of the Lord and ask Him for guidance. Mm -hmm. And I've done that. Sometimes I got lost in the sauce, as they say. And I made my own mistakes and only did more damage to a relationship. But the beauty part about it is, and here's the beauty part about it, is no matter how much mistakes that you've done in your relationship, you could always start fresh. Okay. And I'm not saying that, you know, you start fresh and start over and everything's hunky dory. If that doesn't happen. Like, what I'm saying, like, for instance, say, like, if, if if you found out, you know, your spouse is cheating on you. That's never, it's never going to be the same as far as, like, the, the how the relationship was before the betrayal of cheating. But at the same time, if you start fresh and go back to square one, which is, you know, like I said, our friendship, or, you know, go back to square one and allow God to to allow him to to fix whatever situations that you can't fix. He can mend it. He can mend it. <laughs> That's the thing I think people don't realize. Like, when you do certain things like that, like, if you look at your relationship as an actual, like, say, a human body, right? The cheating, like, the things that when you step out on the marriage kind of almost like breaks certain parts of the body down absolutely now that's not to say those parts of the body can't be mended it can it's just, be it's just never going to be the same right and, and not only do not to mention also like it might take time for that body to heal yeah so it and i've seen relationships where where you know there was cheating involved and throughout the, the gripes of counseling 
and you know allow God to to work within them. I've seen relationships get stronger from from cheating. I've seen relationships break because of cheating. It's like it all depends on how the spouses take it. You know what I mean? But at the same time, is regardless of whatever happens in the relationship, you can always start fresh. Yeah. It might not be with that spouse anymore, but you can always start fresh. Life does not end when, believe it or not, and I keep and it's sad when I see situations like this. Life does not end when marriages and relationships break up. You can recover. Yeah, you still got a whole life. Right. To and there's plenty of people who, who were, you know, broken up. It took them a while, but they recovered. They found better people for them. Maybe better people. Sometimes that, that spouse will come right back. Yeah. See, and that's the thing. You can always start fresh when you make a mistake. Like I say, might not have the, the results that you that you like, but you can you can start over. But that's what, to me, that's what makes a strong relationship, a communication, um, communication, and, and to me, you know, allowing God to control it. And like I said, we're not always going to be perfect. Like I said, we're never going to be perfect. But at the same time, it's just like when I talked about in early story times, whenever you make a mistake, you can always go back and try to fix it. And that's what makes, that's to me what makes strong relationships. So be friends with each other. You know, be friends with each other. That's the, that's the root. If you try to rely, if you build it on sex and stuff like that, look, face it, sex, sex just fades after years of being together. And it's not because you may be not attracted to your spouse anymore. But it could be just because you're getting older. Like, you went through a lot of bodily changes mm -hmm. over the years. And, you know, I go through a lot of changes, too, you know. Uh, we just discussed about what happened earlier. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when I was going through the rise. I got ear problems now. It's like, it's like it's just so many situations that, that this is just causing everything, you know, to, to falter. Mm 